Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be having a look at the area of a circle. So, we all know the area of a circle is nothing but pi times the radius of the circle squared. But why does pi appear randomly here in this formula? We all know that pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. And this holds for any circle of any size. But why does pi also appear here in this area formula for a circle? So to see why this is the case right here, why not use what we already know about the circle? Namely that the circumference, the distance around the circle, is nothing but pi times the diameter. But remember, the diameter is exactly two times the radius. So why not replace this d here with two times our radius. So now we have the formula for the circumference of our circle, which we are all familiar with. So now we're gonna use this fact here to prove that the area of a circle is exactly pi times r squared. So at the moment, we can't really do anything with this circle right here. So maybe why not try and split the circle up into many different parts? So you may choose to slice this circle up like a pizza, but in this video, I'm going to slice it up in rings. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're going to take many little rings that run in, inside our circle, like so. So if we cut our circle up like this, we're going to get many, many rings. It really doesn't quite matter how many rings we have, we just need a lot of them. So now what I want to do with all of these rings that I've just cut up is I'm going to cut all of them. Just like that. So after I've done my cut here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unfold all of my rings. So let's see what happens to, say, this ring right here when I unfold it. Well, if I lay it out into a straight line, the shape I'm going to get is some kind of weird looking trapezium like so. Well, this shape right here is kind of annoying to work with, but notice that this almost looks like a rectangle. So let's go back to this picture over here. Let's see what happens if we increase the number of rings in our circle while keeping the exact same radius. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to get many, many more rings. And if we have a lot more rings packed into the same exact radius, well, that means the width of each ring will get thinner and thinner and thinner. And if we do the exact same cut along this red line and unfold each of these little rings here, our trapezium here will get closer and closer to the shape of a rectangle. And why is this the case, you might ask? Well, if our rings are quite thick on our circle here, let's say we take this green ring right here. Well, obviously, the circumference of this small ring right here will be a lot smaller than the circumference of this bigger ring right here. So that corresponds to this side of the trapezium being quite shorter than the longer side of our trapezium. But if we increase the number of rings in our circle here, well, our green ring will get thinner and thinner and thinner. And as it gets thinner, the circumference of these two boundaries of our ring here will get closer and closer and closer together. Meaning that if we let the number of our rings in our circle approach infinity, that means the inner circumference of our ring will pretty much be the same as the outer circumference of our ring. And that's why when we have more and more of those rings, when we unfold each of our rings here, we're going to get a shape that's more and more like a rectangle. Well, now why not unfold every single one of our rings in here after we've cut it along this red line? Well, our smallest ring will be so incredibly small that it just looks like a little dot, I don't really know. And our next ring around that will be a little bit taller. And if we keep laying out each ring next to the, our previous ring, we're going to get some kind of shape that looks like that. It's gonna start building up taller and taller and taller. And remember the radius of our circle is R. That means after we've stacked all of our rings together, the width of all of our rings right here will be exactly R. So remember, we wanted the amount of rings in our circle to approach infinity. But what does all of this look like on our picture right here? We're going to get a lot more towers stacking up against each other like so. And as the number of our towers here approach infinity, well, the shape we're going to get is exactly a right angle triangle. And it might be weird thinking of how to get from a circle to a right angle triangle. So I think the best way to show this is to slap on some axes here. So let's call this axis the x-axis and the y-axis. And we want to find the equation of this line right here. 
Well, remember the formula for the circumference of our circle. It's nothing but two times pi times our radius. Well, if we consider this very last ring right here, that's exactly the ring on the outside that's going around the circumference of our circle. Well, that ring has a radius of 2 pi r. That means when we unfold all of this, the height of this last tower here will be exactly 2 pi r. And let's take another point for example, let's take maybe this middle tower right here. Well, maybe that corresponds to this ring that's going around it in the middle right here. Well, if we call the radius of that kind of intermediate ring, let's say, r, well, its circumference, which corresponds to the height of this tower right here, will be 2 pi times little r. And notice that whatever radius we pick in this range here, to get to our circumference here, all we're doing is multiplying it by 2 pi. So we can come up with an equation for this line here, which kind of represents the circumference of each radius to be y equals 2 pi x. And you see, this is exactly a straight line, a linear relation. And that's why this whole block of black marker here is exactly a triangle. And remember, the area of this triangle came from the area of this circle. Basically, all we did was we took many, many rings inside our circle and we unfolded each of those rings and we laid it out onto a graph. And in doing so, we reframed the question of finding the area of a circle into finding the area of a triangle, which we know how to do quite easily. So we know the dimensions of our triangle. The height is exactly this length right here, which we found was 2 pi r. And our width or the base of our triangle is nothing but the radius of our circle, which is r. So the area of our triangle, which is the same thing as the area of our circle, is nothing but half times the base times the height. So we have half times the base times the height. And notice that these twos will cancel. And we have r times r, which becomes r squared. And we have this pi here. So in the end, we get pi times r squared, which is exactly the formula that we were expecting from the very start. So that's a quick visual proof of the area of a circle. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see everyone next time.